scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Your ability to do what you do is not just a demand for it alone. That you have skill and proficiency enough to do it well. And then number three, the difficulty in replacing you. The degree to which it's difficult to find somebody like you doing the same thing. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This is the exact formula for wealth. It will work for anybody, any day, anywhere. It's a principle. Unfortunately, preachers just tell you, tithe and sow a seed and go and sit back and watch what God will do. Then favor will come. But because you do not understand, you will come and testify. Praise the Lord. I gave tight or I dropped a seed in miracle service and now somebody brought one million. The question is, will you remain a millionaire after three years? Two weeks after that testimony, you, your mind takes you where you were before you drop the seed. Say, I refuse to be poor. Shout it, I refuse to be poor. I make up my mind to be wealthy. What I'm going to show you tonight, if you remain poor after this series, you were not fair to yourself. I'm being very sincere with you. When I show you what you're about to learn tonight, see, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, don't trivialize what you are hearing now. People pay millions of naira to hear half of what you are hearing. I have a responsibility over us to make sure that we hear the truth. I got a testimony that there's a pastor who is in oil and gas. He's a living faith pastor. And he stumbled across the wealthy place, part two. Just the part two. And I heard that when he listened to it, he was looking for all his friends and business associates and giving them. And say, I've been a businessman and I have never had this. This is somebody into oil and gas. He said it changed his mind completely and now you are here seated and you're just nodding many of our parents if they had one tenth of what i'm telling you i promise you they would have been billionaires see this this thing is 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 so magical that no matter how dull it's not left to your personal intelligence at all this is this is the thing that makes wealth a great blessing if it was just a product of the Y, the X, intellect, some people will be disadvantaged. But it was designed in such a way that even the dullest who is obedient will be wealthy. Is God speaking to us? So the amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion to this. And we did a little personal evaluation. Take note of that. Let's go straight to the teaching of tonight. The wealthy place, part three. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. To better days. I'm on my way. On my way, on my way to better days. To better days. I'm on my way, on 
Multiple streams of income, right? Tonight I want to teach you the law that is responsible for activating multiple streams of income. I pray you value it. I pray from the depth of my heart that you value it. I struggled with sharing what I'm about to share today because I was wondering. See, I hate it when personally because I treasure every information and I treasure every revelation that I bring out. And um, the greatest reward that I can receive for this is not one million, it's not ten million, it's not to say, come and take a car or take a house. And that's, that's not my concern. The greatest reward for this series is that we see people experiencing the financial rain in their lives. For me, this is the greatest consolation. No matter what you buy or sow into my life, it's as irrelevant as whatever. It will really grieve my heart. If after this teaching, your finances does not change, I don't know what to tell you again. Praise the Lord. Because this is the very secret of the world's greatest millionaires billionaires all of them every single one of them if you have ever admired them this is the key i've reduced the work for you all the tens and hundreds of books seminars videos and all kinds of sacrifices has been compressed in a series for you to receive if you don't act on it there's no reason why you should blame god Unfortunately, I know that not all of us will act on it. It's a sad truth. That's why Jesus told the disciples, he said, the poor you will always have with you. Meaning there are people, no matter what they hear, they will not change. And the trouble is those who don't change are the ones who will criticize us. They will get angry because they are not doing anything. And they'll say it's not true. What they've taught is not true. People, if I told you now, all of you, take off your shoes put your right finger there's something I'm going to bring out and shake many of you say my, my story will change because you like things that don't commit you you see why we like fetish things Africa for that matter they say turn around and slap something three times say, go it's done the man leaves rejoicing because that spirit of laziness we hate it Whenever you tell people it's up to you, they say, no, do it for me. Just do it and give me the result. God will bless you. Unfortunately, life is not like that. We like a wolf. That a wolf mindset has done a lot. We like telling people, thank you. Just do it. And you say, really, just for me? Unfortunately, not everything in life is a gift. There are things that are rewards. They will commit you. This is one of them. That's why people like lottery. They like inheritance. It's one word that we love in Africa, inheritance. He died and left it for me. <laughs> That's why we love that scripture, the wealth of the wicked. Ah, yeah, yeah. Notice I've not touched that scripture. The wealth of the wicked is laid for me. You will grow old. That scripture was written, wait, hold on. That scripture was written before our forefathers were born. Is that true? That scripture was even written before colonialism. And those who quoted it died without touching the wealth. My Bible says, God gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge. And then he gives to the unbeliever to heap and to gather that he may give to the believer. We think that it's just because we are singing praises and tithing. Then Dangote will get up one day and say, um, Shahoma, there is an anointing on me. I don't know what is upon me. Please come. Um, this is my sugar company. It's your own. If that is your idea about the massive kingdom wealth transfer, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
what? What an illusion. You really believe the man will leave his PA, his sons and daughters, wives and concubines, and then just come to you because you think, listen, I know we keep talking a lot. We say in one day, the wealth of Egypt was given to Israel. You don't talk about 40 years when Moses was in the wilderness. You don't talk about Moses' compliance. You don't talk about his repeatedly going to Pharaoh. We see courage. We see audacity. We see character. We see discipline. Right? We see faith. We see patience. You leave all of that one and the only thing you see is that in one night, I've told you preparation takes time. It's manifestation that is instant. We talk about Joseph becoming the prime minister. We forget that a woman lied that he raped her. Do you know what it means to be scandalized on your road to destiny? We forget all that man and we just say in one day, Joseph came up. From the day he helped someone to the day of his reward was two years. The wine presser forgot about him, yet he was still faithful. He was not offended. We are the ones who have deceived you. Pastors, pastors are the ones who have deceived sincerely and innocently, but very wrongly. And we must admit it. I told you many pastors do not have financial literacy. Why? Because all we do is copy and paste. I go for a pastor's conference. I hear what a man of God I honor says. And you see, the fact that you are... Um, the wealth of ministers is, is, is a very special case in Nigeria because a man as a pastor may not have financial intelligence and yet be rich because of the way ministry is done. Are you getting the point? He is fulfilling the law although he does not know it so he is rich and he thinks the reason why he is rich is just because he is anointed. No sir, this is the reason. So many people are under pressure. If I must be rich like my daddy or papa, I must be a pastor. Right? So there are so many people who are not called into the fivefold ministry, racing to make sure they start churches in a hope that if I have plenty members, imagine what it will translate to. Let me tell you something funny that someone told me. I think it was a year or two ago. We were somewhere and I paid for something and the person looked at me. He said, man of God, you are the people who enjoy ministry. See all the plenty crowd in Koinonia. You see, you see why he's poor? Because in his mind, he's saying, Abba, if everybody prophets of if everybody gives you ten ten thousand or one one thousand you see that on koinonia database there are about six thousand five hundred people multiply that one times even one one this is how poor people think they just say kai apostle tell us the truth you are enjoying see <laughs> if that's what you are thinking how much have you given me how much have you given me your personal seed? No, that's wrong. That's not how you think. That's not the reason why men of God are prosperous. Multiple streams of income. Let's go to the business of the night. Are you blessed? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. So, so 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 keep you. So 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 keep you. Sing it one more time. So so keep you. Verse 10. Genesis 2 verse 10. I want to show you a mystery. May God open your eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us media. It's possible. Genesis 2 verse 10. Only you are worthy. Everyone read. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and it became what? Four. Next verse. The name of the first was Pishon. That which is 
that which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is what? Stop. The Bible says, look at me. From Eden, there was one river. And then it said the river parted itself into four streams. And it started telling us that every one of the streams had a particular treasure. In one of it, there was gold. And the Bible says the gold is good. It started listing precious metals and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, one river parting itself into four streams. A particular man of God said this and I believe so much. The secret to oceanic wealth is having multiple streams of income. A stream can dry, but an ocean never dries. Never dries. An ocean never dries. A little stream can dry. But an ocean will never dry. This from scripture becomes for us a revelation into constructively building a robust recession-proof financial life. Multiple streams of income. The greatest limitation with the Nigerian economy and the nigerian citizens generally is the mindset that operates a single stream of income and that single stream of income is usually our job job that job mindset is one of the greatest financial stumbling block in my opinion that's what has stopped many people so an average young man in nigeria operating under the 6334 system you know completes his secondary education and then goes to the university to study for maybe four five six years or whatever and then may add a master's or whatever it is and the moment he graduates the first thing in his mind now please don't get me wrong just follow me i'm not against job but the first thing is his, in his mind is to be employed it's not his fault it's not her fault the system designed you that way are you getting me so the moment you finish, the first question elderly people ask you is, uh -uh, you are finished now. You say, yes. Say, so where are you working? Not what are you producing? Not are you deploying your potentials? Where are you working? So it trains you to serve. It trains you to work. Now the trouble is this. The average salary of a young graduate or even somebody that is working well in Nigeria ranges within 50 to 100,000. Is that fair enough? That's about the amount, right? <laughs> no matter how careful you are with that money, it cannot fund your vision. Are you getting the point now? A job was never designed to completely fund your assignment. Getting one stream of income or staying on one stream of income is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. Please listen to me. Operating under one stream of income, I don't care how successful that stream is, is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. That's the reason why many people never have enough. Now you are working. And they think the problem is that their paycheck is just 100,000. Then they now rise to a managerial level where they may be earning about 250, maybe 350. Some people never even earn that much. And then they find out that things do not change. Right? Because of Parkinson's law, that your need will rise to meet your level of income. The meaning of that is you cannot be earning 300,000 and be eating at mama food is that true so while you were earning 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000 you can go to a place where you eat food for 70 naira but you cannot be earning 300,000 and go and sit down eating the food for 70,000 naira so your need your your expenses will rise with your level of income you were earning 50,000 and you were able to do something decent with it and then you forgot that you are going to get married. You thought your wife was a toy. You don't know that she's a human being with a stomach to eat, 
a body to dress and then you had the gods to get her pregnant here comes your twins see that yet hold on whether you call them children or adults financially they are three human beings are you getting me regardless of their level of consumption they will still take something out from you and then you have a dog oh and then you have goats you see we, you don't know that all the once it is a living entity it must consume you have been counting yourself alone are you getting the point now now the trouble is there is nothing called job security job security is an illusion you know what job security is job security means that you are working in a place where um, your your stay can be fairly predictable that you can build a financial life around it because you think that in the next 10 or 15 years you will still be there in the Nigeria of today and in the 21st century the concept of job security does not exist praise the Lord everybody say hallelujah say I got a federal government job which one civil defense and you laugh to mean that for the next 20 years I will be there you really think so see that so we find consolation oh I'm working in a bank and all of a sudden you get up one day and your director tells you sorry we are downsizing people and uh, here's the list of those who must go what did I do sir? I said no 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 you didn't do anything we really appreciate you in fact your services are well needed can you leave I remember somebody who got a job I think he was with Etisalat or um, Airtel one of these um, telecommunication companies he was very happy at the point he was preparing for his marriage he prepared based on that budget then they now told them they are moving the office to Ibadan or something and they told them they will share you either follow them to Ibadan or they will give you 200,000 and off you go and he smiled and collected the 200,000 because you see when you are poor you think 200,000 is a lot of money until you collect it and find out that the money to transport your in-laws or to transport yourself you know, <laughs> we'll finish everything and then you find out that you are I will never forget a few days to his wedding he refused to come to the place where the wedding would take place I had to call him and say where are you he said I'm so so place I said leave that place right now and come what is all that can't be can't run away just come and trust God hmm. that's very true nothing in this world will satisfy this is a part of the song I love. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Every mundane, listen, the Babylonian system, this cosmos, the economy of the world was never designed to make you rich. It was designed to strangle you to death. That's why I like that song. It's the cup that will never run dry. Jesus, you're the You sing just that part one more time. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. The wisdom of the word can open you up to a realm. It may not happen immediately, but as surely as the morning comes after the night, it can bring you into the place we call the wealthy place. There is such a place here and now. Hallelujah. So, the single income stream is one of the things that has destroyed a lot of people why do we need multiple streams of income number one to ensure abundance at all seasons to ensure abundance at all seasons to ensure abundance all seasons please let me have four people I want to use them to just um, make an illustration three four people let me thank you just stand here guys watch this let's call these guys different streams just stand and face me thank you watch this if this is the first and only stream of income you have let's call this a job right 
We'll identify what the others are shortly. But let's assume this is all you have, your job. Let's even call it a nice place, NMPC. That's where many of us dream of. Or Shell, or Chevron, or whatever it is you want to call it. Right? Watch this. This is all you have. Number one, it was never designed to fund your project. And number two, your salary will only keep coming to the extent to which that corporation keeps functioning. It's one thing for you to be employed and it's another thing for your corporation to keep being relevant. If you were working in Nitel in the 90s, you would be happy because Nitel was invincible. I mean, they were the only telecommunication company you would imagine that working in Nitel by now you would have been the boss only for you to be fired and sent away because the demand right for as long as there was a demand for their product and their service they had money when there was no demand number two if you were working in night post post office right and you were working as the secretary using the typewriters whether electronic or manual doesn't matter right now we have emails i remember when we used to post letters in fact even with the young people have experienced some dramatic transitions remember when they used to use card you get a card and then you load it 200 500 and you slot it in one big something and you hold it you know and then you are trying to talk and then the card just finishes and it starts beeping only for you to go and buy another one imagine within the last 10 to 20 years the transition that has happened so for you to say job security in terms of working in an organization is a mirage the service that organization provides may be inelastic but then the question is what is the guarantee that they will still need your service how many people do we know seated here listening to me right now many who are following us online how many people do you know started working very well and they were happy they gave tight sincere people and now they've been laid off and they've remained there in their utter frustration five years have turned to ten years ten years has turned to fifteen years and many of us look around and we say daddy I grew up knowing you not to work and they say I've been waiting uh, even last week I submitted my CV and look at this he started that when you were five years now you are 25 for 20 years he's hoping that one day somebody will need his service enough to give him a job one stream the beauty of multiple streams is this watch this the the limitation of one stream is covered up by another stream are you getting what I'm saying now there is no stream of income that is perfect what you can do is to combine streams of income that complement one another so that the lapse of one is covered by the availability of another are, are you getting the point now this is part of the benefits for instance do you know that is one thing for you to get a job but it's another thing for you not to be paid there are workers in some states that have not been paid for how many months almost six months now you notice I'm sorry to say it, but most of the civil servants in Nigeria don't pay them for two to four months and they are dead completely dead are you seeing that those who have extra streams of income while they wait for the salary to be paid there's something to fall back on see they can laugh with you and say Kai times are hard but it's not true they are saying it because you will insult them if they say times are not hard they are identifying with that poverty mindset. So they say it's true, times are hard, but the truth is they are, they, are, they, are on heaven. they are in heaven, heaven on earth. You see that? So you find out that this person is here. God forbid his car is stolen. His salary alone was designed to take care of the family. But because there is another stream, in two or three months he has bought another car. For, so, for somebody who collected, he was loaned from the bank and he bought a car of 2.5 million you have not finished paying the loan and they've stolen the car you know you are finished whether you are to go for work or not you must go because if not for anything that loan must be paid out of the 2.5 you've paid only maybe 90,000 
or 130,000. You know that you are, the journey is still far. You cannot afford to quit your job no matter how sick you are. So you see people angrily dragging themselves in the morning. That's why they vent the anger on you. They get up and look at you. One, two, three, four, five, six children. Now the seventh one has come. There is a loan of nine million to pay in the bank. They now cut our salary from 200,000 to 150. And the man is saying, where is my life going? See, every man you have seen was not like that. Every man you have seen who is angry, beating his wife. I can tell you, if that's how he toasted the woman, she would have told him no. Something made them happy. Notice men from 50 years and above. That's why people don't even remember Father's Day. Because all we remember about fathers is their cruel and wicked. It's not their fault. It's the inability to learn what I'm teaching you. And if you don't learn it, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord, you are on the way to becoming exactly like that. Absolutely. In fact, it will be harder. Because the 21st century, living in the 21st century right now, is a lot more difficult and complex. Right? Well, if you factor in terrorism, if you factor in wickedness by people, put in all these factors, humanly speaking, that living in the 21st century is living in a challenging time. Your advantage is in the fact that you have many streams. So you are an ocean receiving from many streams. If one stream dries up, there is another that can complement. While you are working on that one, then there is another. There is no millionaire I know except wicked and godless and corrupt and wicked people. Except those ones. But there is nobody who is a millionaire and a billionaire. And trust me, I've met a number of them in my life. None of them operates under one street. It's poor and average people, civil servants that operate on one stream of income. You calculate everything, what the father and the mother is getting. For some, it's not even up to 100,000. And yet, the school fees of one child is 75,000 or 50,000 or even 30,000. Why would the man not be angry? Do you know how many angry people are in Nigeria? Have you seen them lately? You stand outside tomorrow morning and just watch. Just get a chair and sit down and watch people angry somebody will be moving and just kick something oh and he just stress don't laugh oh i'm i'm very serious about what i'm saying you are laughing now because somebody is giving you money all the time by the end of this year they will tell you you have come of age and uh, we have seen how god has helped you thus far from now henceforth you are on your own that's when it will dawn on you you will go back to your notes and start reading everything that I've said. I saw this happen to my father. I saw this happen in my very family. I saw this happen to many pastors, sincere people, very honest people. This has happened to many ministries. There are many beggarly ministries. This has led people into witchcraft. It has led people into corruption. Get the implication of this. It has led people into 419. It has led people into all kinds of things. Whenever they catch armed robbers or they catch prostitutes, look at our ladies. Many ladies have gone into prostitution. Do you know that I, I saw a shocking statistic that I think is it about 40% of the firstborn in many families are not the product of the husband and the wife. When we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of confession. Very funny statistics. Multiple streams of income is the key to surviving financially in the 21st century. Activating multiple streams of income, hear me brothers and sisters, is the key to surviving the vicious tide. The vicious tide of economic hardship. Because it will happen. You have not seen recession yet. More will come. It's in your Bible right talking about the heavens over people becoming like brass and their earth becoming like iron it will happen you can't stop it you can only exempt yourself i choose to exempt myself so i rather pay the price now and exempt myself hallelujah bless you guys thank you 
So the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another. Now watch this. I want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income. Write two words down. One, cash flow. Please, quickly, let's save time. We have to finish um, what we have. One, cash flow. Number two, write capital projects. One, cash flow. Two, capital projects. You are not, listen, you are not truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things. Watch this. Cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure. Is that true? Capital projects or the money, the income for capital project talks about the resource, the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have. Building, you know, school fees of your children and, and all of that, savings and so on and so forth. Now watch this. Our parents were taught so much about long-term projects. So they bought land, right? They have cattle, they have goats, they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects, but they did not make arrangements for cash flow. So you can see a man that owns 10 houses, but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency. You will think the man is stingy because you, that's how many of our parents, many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money. They may not necessarily be doing that. They are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it. So they do not, they didn't prepare for today. They were focusing so much on tomorrow. They forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow. Are you getting that now? So they forgot that there will be needs. How many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1,000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke. He may say, I don't have money. You think he's joking, but truly, truly, there is nothing. That's a poor financial life. Yet he has land, right? Yes, he has resources. Who owns this container? He's the person. Who owns this Coca-Cola depot? He's the person, but there's no provision for this. Now, the trouble is, in a bit to remedy that, the younger generation, our generation has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket and we're forgotten about tomorrow. You see the mistake? So, I need money now. I want to buy the watch of 20,000 now. I want to buy the trouser now. So you see somebody and say, man, this guy is rich. The watch of 20,000 shoe of 15 or 20,000 you are wearing a suit of this you calculate everything on him and he's standing he's wearing 200,000 and you are beguiled to think he's very rich still everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow are you getting what I'm saying so financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance such that you can eat today you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow there are many of our parents you will start enjoying their money when they are 80 years at 80 years the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition but at that time they are too old they can't do anything they will die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone and you will quietly just leave are you seeing that now and then we the younger generation are so obsessed i'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results watch people that graduate everybody wants to show i'm working i now bought a car a bmw and um, i don't i no longer use the road i now fly i fly i fly around i'm flying to this place i'm flying to that place and then you carry your phone and say this is this is iphone iphone what iPhone 6 have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth and then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich that's why every rich man will look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head and say this guy is about to regret it unfortunately most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich so you come back and say is that brother that 
ask me and they say which one the poor one or the rich one and then you say the rich one meaning the one that held that phone the one that the, the watch or the shoes and all these were glittering you, are, you will be in big error because if you neglect today you will die today and never meet tomorrow and if you concentrate just on today you will enjoy today if you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow today you walk naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow today get set for hunger are you getting what I'm saying so my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future praise the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus for wisdom the key to activating multiple streams of income write this down you do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses now I listen to business people a lot and I've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences but the problem here watch this for many people the danger huh, is that they just tell you go and start up a business aside from your job do something else that teaching is very sincere but misleading if you have received that teaching I want you to throw it away now and listen to what I'm about to teach you because for many people that's that's the circumference of your business seminar are you getting blessed so they've told you together with the job start something anything just start no sir you will start and fail and fail woefully write this down God's system for activating your streams of income I want to teach you the kingdom system there is a Babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration ends you in penury or you will be rich but at the expense of your salvation you will be rich but at the expense of very important things in your life everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom and this is where men of God must balance I believe in in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas but please hear me you must be careful not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook line and sinker many men of God go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the Lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of God's word I don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs chapter 4 18 verse 16 quickly it's a popular scripture we always talk about but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time what I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life Proverbs 18 verse 16 let's read on it says a man's gift please listen please pay attention a man's gift does what does two things what's number one it makes room for him is that true what's number two it brings him before a man's gift does two things for him it gives him opportunity and it gives him access write it down your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life it gives you opportunities 
and then it gives you access access entrance before the great a man's gift so how do you identify the streams of income in your life many people have been taught they so they teach you different businesses and they tell you just do this this no 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 there's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea you will succeed you see the mistake this is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot write this down you identify the streams in your life by looking at two things number one your gifts and abilities your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to. Your gifts and your abilities. Write it down. Number two, the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. The problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. These are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life. One, your gifts and your abilities. Two, the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. Not just any problem. You know they tell people, search for problems. There are problems all around Nigeria. You go and try a problem that you don't have passion for. And that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources is god helping us write this down every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income how true Every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income. Every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream. Look at David for instance. Almost every gift the Bible identifies in David later became a stream for him. His ability to play, right? His ability to be faithful in service. His leadership skill. Everything was utilized in his life. I'm about to make a statement that is very striking. Maybe controversial. Especially for pastors. I want you to listen to me. Do not let men box you into one stream. And stop you from exploring other streams. Don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that I want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials, with great leadership potentials, there are other streams of income that can find expression, but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there. Why? Because people say you are a pastor. And the meaning of that is remain there, be poor there, and die there. This kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century. You cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again or i am a civil servant so when you call people you say those who are civil servants this side and you see a mass of people like bees coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur are you getting my point there must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century are you getting blessed is god helping you there are many pastors i say this with a particular bias for pastors because 
we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating God's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning 20,000 with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after, after service and all of them deserve to be fed. This has brought a lot of problems for people, especially those in ministry. Listen to me. Every potential you have that God put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the Lord without giving it expression. Every gift in you. I plan in my life that every gifting and every potential His Majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed. Praise the Lord. There are so many things. That's why many pastors are poor. That's why they are broke. One of my greatest mentors, Dr. Miles Munro, a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society, utilized his potentials. As a pastor, he was the senior pastor and the founder of Bahamas Faith Ministry International. And yet, at the same time, brothers and sisters, he was a consultant for 16 presidents. How many? A consultant, an advisor to 16 presidents. At the same time, he was so notable, the Bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador. Imagine that. And then at the, at the same time, he owned an aircraft company, not aircraft. They are busy shouting that people are buying jets. Many of you may not know. Let me explain it to you. What it means, it, he, he not owned one aircraft, Boeing 737. No, 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 no. He owned a fleet of aircraft, the very company that deals in it. And yet he was a kingdom man. He lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven. That's why he was a man of integrity. He was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need. Why will you steal church money? For what? How much is the money? Are you getting the point? I tell you the truth. Not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it. And then leaving them say, it's like you are hungry, you fasted for three days. And then they make hot food nice food rise up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if their conviction at you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight say after me in the name of Jesus I am gifted shout it in the name of Jesus there is a gift upon my life there are graces upon my life there are abilities upon my life and I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. Even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams. Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? You see, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, he called from he called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was standing his father in law's sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. 
God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak. Right? There are so many things. There are books to write. I have different thoughts on different areas. I can document my persuasions. There are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up. So don't you see a man of God rich and just think it's church money or just think and think are people not dashing their money. You see articles blackmailing men of God all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has, as though he's not supposed to be blessed. People are arguing and complaining about one jet, two jets. My goodness, I don't know what will happen by the time we we'll come. If we need 100 jets, we will buy all of them. I guarantee you. Very unapologetically. See that? You can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity. It doesn't have to be by crooks. It doesn't have to be by pranks. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him $4 million. Multiply that by 210 Naira thereabout. That gives you the equivalent in Naira because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million, I said, come on, give the man a break. He didn't steal anybody's money. Why will I be worth 10 million, 20 million, 100 million and not live in a house? How much is 1.2? How much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million? Don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. Their tape ministry, the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, have, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are walking in it. Hallelujah. Ministry for me alone, with all the blessings of ministry, is only one stream of income. There are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed. I will never be poor. It's not about being a preacher. It's about realizing that once there is a demand for what I do, and I train myself in the ability to see, to do it. When you are sleeping, the wealthy people are awake studying seminars doing a lot of things right and then we see them rich and we criticize them please i want to say this koinonia from today never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again you will never be like what you resent anything you drive away from your life you can never be like it honor is the seed for access Hallelujah. 
I'm friends to many, by the grace of God, many wealthy people and many millionaires. I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions. See that? This is very important. But then let me, let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing. Now, I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this. The trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No, no, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life. That's the reason why God fragmented himself into different aspects. You cannot know Rafa by studying Jaira. Jaira is a dimension itself. Rafa is a dimension itself. Sikenu is a dimension itself. Is that true? El Shaddai is a dimension itself. But all of those names belong to one person. I am. So he said, who do men say that I am? And they were calling different dimensions of him. As a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true that you do not stay on one place, you must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things I may not be able to share here. But see, the business world is a lot different from ministry. In the business world, you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves. As a man of God, you can ruin your church in one moment. Right? I know there was a situation that happened in, in one church down in Abuja. It's, it's one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of God but you must give them room to build their financial capacities. Don't over pamper people in the name of kindness. They will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity. Are you getting me? Many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things. When things go wrong or it fails, they will kill you. They will write articles about you. They will lock you up as a man of God. And so let people take their responsibilities by themselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is God giving us wisdom? This is a mistake a lot of pastors have made. They come to church. Anybody just comes in and says, I'm a lawyer. I have some land. I am a this. I have that. And then the pastor comes and announces. And because people love the pastor, they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please i'm telling us especially for men of god who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity 
as a man of God, define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there. Now, there are other platforms you can create, like Sunday Adelaja, who created a lot of business platforms. If you want to do anything that is business in the church, set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it. Spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this, not in the name of the church, but at their own risk. That way, whatever happens, the integrity of the church is preserved. Is God teaching us? I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands. But this is giving us wisdom, especially for those of us who are leaders. Don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people. That they are praying in tongues and they hug you. You don't yet know their attitude towards money. They will stab you and kill you. Is God helping us? Let's continue. So your streams of income should be around your giftings, should be around your abilities, your streams of income. Now look up. I want to teach you something, please. Very important now. Write this word down. Time. T-I-M-E. Write this word down, time. Your life on earth is measured in time. Don't forget this. Your life on earth is measured in time. That means whatever you give your time to, you have given part of your life to. The time you are giving your employer or your job, your office, is part of your life you are giving to them. Write this down. Focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time. Focus. There is only limited time you have. Everybody has only 24 hours. You cannot have 25 hours in a day. So if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation, you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective. Wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time. Let me give you an instance. If I write a book right now, if I write one book, right, I communicate my thoughts. Maybe books on, there are so many books that I have, I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me. To begin to write books i know many of them will be bestsellers because i will not just get up and write books i will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them i have the content but what of the marketing what of the publicity never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best you will minimize mistakes you will make instant progress so i can write a book right now for instance and then release it and I can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore doesn't know me has never seen me may never see me right and then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because I'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas I can write on I can write on the anointing I can write on wealth and prosperity I can write on leadership all the areas that I know God has granted me grace in. I'm just showing you how one stream. Now I can be here and be effective in Koinonia. Another thing for instance, if I build an estate, you see that? If I build an estate, there are people renting, I don't even know them, I've never seen them for instance, but I'm here teaching the word. My time is being invested to the principal thing I've been called to do, but there are channels that are bringing me are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. If I teach, assuming that we're selling our teachings, imagine the hundreds of millions we would have made by now on just the media ministry. But God instructed us not to do that. The impact is more important than the money. One grateful person can bring what we would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day. This is the benefit. Every time you dispense value, you must be rewarded. Whether you sell it or you give it free. It's a law. 
So we are not at a loss at all. Now imagine that today's message, the media department will now package it, the wealthy place, volume one, volume two, volume three, right? And then maybe each of them is sold now. You can imagine that. And all of that is happening. So people are buying it somewhere. Whereas you are still here. As much as possible. Value your time. Your time is premium. You must know that. You cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything. It's too much to give your life just for money. No. Let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time. So that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life. I hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money. You should chase after God. Chase after God. Seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom. That's what is meant by his righteousness here. Yeah. And he said all other things will be added. Let's hurry up. When you give your time, you give your life. Never forget that. The reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary. Number one, you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your, your skill. Number two, you are exchanging your time. These are the two things that go for your salary. You cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life. Because you're 24 hours. If you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment, how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom? Imagine that I cannot come for Koinonia now and say because I'm trying to do something there, I'm looking for money somewhere. It's terrible. I'm failing in my assignment. It doesn't matter how much money I make. So you have to be careful so that you don't just, that's the language of those we call hustlers. Hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money. Right? They have, their time is valueless to them. So they can give it away just for anything. My time is precious to me because my life is measured in time. God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day. And I focus on doing the things that are consistent with my vision and my assignment. And while it is true that I want to activate streams of income, it will not be at the detriment of my assignment. And so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income. And then at the same time, conserve your time as much as possible. Praise the Lord. Write this down. There is a, an equation for financial freedom. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind. That you have money does not mean you are financially free. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance, the availability of the resources plus time. There are people who have money but no time. No time to pray, no time to build, no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families. No time at all. They tell you no time i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy they started doing that when they were 20. now they are 55. i'm busy i'm busy and then they die because on the seventh day god rested you you are in the ninth day you have not rested you will die hallelujah let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century in the school of prosperity especially in the 21st century almost any and everything has a demand there is a demand for almost any and everything this is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years in the next five years should be poor impossible there is a demand for just any and everything the world is a global village. There is a demand for just anything. See? Right now, even people's laugh has brought them millions. Somebody just laughs. Is it not your ringtone? Oh, yes. Somebody just laughs around and does everything. That's side A. Does another one. That's side B. You see that? And you put it as your ringtone. And you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything 
a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of god just for being fine you can wipe poverty away from your life forever right just for being not fine you can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways it depends on the message that is being communicated um, I'm just I'm speaking generally there is a demand for everything absolutely everything no matter how little the skill is there is a demand for it look at how pastors you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors allow the glory of god to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge scrounge after that from today till wednesday non-stop i have ministrations every day i have a meeting morning and evening you will think there are already enough pastors no no there are 7.2 billion people right you think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever it's because you do not know how many people are on earth when you know there is a demand for anything and i told you the formula once there is a demand there is money for it you go and meet somebody and say borrow me 10 naira." he'll tell you i cannot but sell something he will pay you for it in the 21st century brothers and sisters you are only limited by your creativity you are only limited by your creativity. Ah! There is a mighty financial army that will rise. Even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. write one word down we're almost done creativity please write it this is an important key in the school of prosperity creativity what does it mean to be creative creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas oh this is key to your life the ability to birth new or improved ideas if you lack this one ability you will never be rich because that's the key to being different that's the key to being unique it's not just what you do it's the uniqueness in it and the key to being unique is hidden in one word creativity the first revelation of god in the bible was not as a savior it was as a creator and he created us in that image creativity what we were born to do anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity this gentleman can produce this 30 minutes of deep intense worship just with instruments and he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this he can call it anything the dew of heaven part one millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones can have a contract with most of the the the, the, the people iphones and, and itunes and all of these people and they can put it they can even put it by default in many gadgets and it's blessing people millions of people are buying it and this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything that's why Don Wen will never be poor. I know you gave your life to Christ at his song, but he became rich because you bought the thing. 
Yes, he never sleeps, he never slumbers, but you bought it. Or at least it was given to you. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand for your gifts or your potentials. The reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it. The reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it. Let me tell you, in the world of prosperity, you lose by becoming like every other person. Your uniqueness is what stands you out. Your competitive advantage. There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life. That I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon and unique. I hear the chains falling, falling. I hear the chains falling. I will give you four streams of income that can help you. That's, that's all we'll touch for this. Um, there are at least eight. I call them recession-proof streams of income. They are all in the Bible. But I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one has to be in a business or a corporate platform. Ready? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 If we can get NIV Please give us NIV quickly I hear the chains Can we get NIV? Okay, fine Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 Please let's save time Will you break every chain? Break every chain it says, give portions to seven. Yea, to eight. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, it says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places. Yea, in eight. Um, what was that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, yeah. mm. Number one. Learn. Learn. Everybody write it down. Learn. Open bracket land and anything you can get under it on it and above it it's all called land you know it as real estate land together with anything under it on it and above it look at me 
you are not rich if you do not own land. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Write it so that you don't forget. I don't care what else you have. You are poor if you do not own land. Because land is a fixed asset. It cannot be stolen. Even if a bomb falls on that land, it can only affect what is on it. You will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you. Land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth. I'll stop there. Land. Two. Education. I'm giving you four fail-proof streams of income. Under education, write the following. Anything, whether speaking, writing, or setting up structures that transfer knowledge. Education is all about imparting knowledge. The Bible gives us a clue into becoming rich. He said, before the coming of Christ, knowledge shall increase. There will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge. That means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education. Speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate. They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge. Imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying 100,000 for the seminar. Calculate how many people. 100,000 times all the people we have, including all those who are online. And I'm doing the same thing. I don't need to talk louder. I don't need to shout more. The exact same thing. 10 years after I have preached this, or I have said this, or I have delivered this lecture, I will still be getting paid for it education one of the cheapest aspect of education is writing the ability to document your persuasion for as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear you can document it the only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense they are just hungry people looking for money so there is no excellence and no creativity and at the end of it only 100 copies are sold and the bookstore tells you please get out but there is a key purpose driven life right Rick Warren that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars it was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out? You are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying. Crying for food and crying for water. The only limitation to your life should be the voice of God. Not lack of creativity. It's God speaking to us. Education. Number three. Your job. Your job. Paid employment. It's a stream of income. So your job is not bad. You can get a job. At least you receive salary from it. And the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs. Because you know every month a fixed income is coming. So it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build. How many have I given? Uh, let's stop at the last one. Transportation. The only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around. We love oil and gas, but we hate transportation. How unwise. I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things. But did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth, there must be movement. You studied something that was a clue to your prosperity, but you forgot. Remember what we, I think it was in biology, social studies, Mr. Niger. Huh? 
biology, Mr. Niger, movement as part of the quality of living things. Is that not true? That was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting. Every day, immediately after Koinonia now, listen, every week, I don't know how, okay, I have an idea. You cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week. Is that not true? Transportation. If they were your bosses, it would have been your money. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000, and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone, only 300 naira will be there. And you can't make any call. You cannot even browse. Whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf. These are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive. Right? The, 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 the driver that carries me around, he started driving me three years ago. And within that three years, he has bought two extra cars. Two extra cars. And I tell you, a large percentage of that was for my money. Think about that. They are always happy. They, you never see them frowning. They are smiling because every time he sees me, he sees his destiny. And for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved. You want to show people, now you live in a three-bedroom flat that is empty with one small mattress in one of the rooms and people think you are a big boy. You are not big, you are small. Whereas something would have been bringing you income. Let me tell you something. The transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied. It's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly. From the first day the car goes out, by evening money is coming 5 a.m. in the morning brothers and sisters there are people who get up begging whether it is town service whether it is wherever I know someone who bought Kekenape right he just bought one I think second year or something like that and then when he bought that Kekenape I think about 12 12,000 comes in every week 12,000. He just went and registered it with the association, National Union, those their union. And then he's around praising the Lord and giving tithe every week. And you are saying, this guy is a thief. No, 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 no. Do you have to be smart to do that? Not necessarily. You just have to be poor. And that's why I told you, there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well-defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four or five months, you are broken even. And you can buy another one. And then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year? To, to now? Some of you, millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club and called friends and blew the money. They blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived. And yet we keep blaming God. But tonight God is giving somebody intelligence. You don't need to register any company. You don't need to know anybody. With an average car or an average golf, at least 3,000 is coming for you every day. This is the minimum. In seven days, it's 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know. But there are many people sitting on you. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. The income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand. Demand. The transport sector there are many people dreaming i will go into oil and gas i will go into oil and gas. how much do you know it takes to start oil and gas you want to be a thief can't you start gradually 
How many people are sitting on 5 million, 10 million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions? You have eaten your own prosperity by yourself. How many people have started popcorn? Popcorn inside ABU. Is that not true? Popcorn. I'll never forget years ago when one of, I think that was in 2006 or seven. I wanted to start one popcorn machine, popcorn business in New Bamadi, and I wanted somebody to manage for me. So I needed to, I sent him to go and do a research for me on everything. I was surprised when the, the owner of the popcorn said he makes 5,000 naira every day. Every day you are eating, you bought it 30 naira, but many just like you are paying for it. And he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it, graduation matric, it can skyrocket to as much as 15,000, 20,000. There is no single ice cream machine in Zaria. Not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough. I'm talking of real, a standard. Look at this. There are many of you sitting down. What's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity? About 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something. I guarantee you, in one month, you will make your money back. That's how desperate it is. I'm, I like ice cream like what? There's a place in Abuja. Every time they see me, they're happy because they, my money will finish there. I can't make it, so I must pay for it. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, be sure to pay for it. If you ever get it free, someone paid for it. Who is God speaking to tonight? I'm showing you streams. I'm a student. I'm young. Very soon, you will find out that the difference between you and graduation is one example. Just one. And you come out and say, it's a lie. Every you say, get out of here. You are finished. Go, 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 go. Why should you be poor when there is such a demand? A de there are, look, let me tell you something. If you have 20, 20 of any of the things I mentioned, there will still not be enough demand. How many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more and about 60% of those people are ladies count the number of saloons you have in your campus are they up to 10 I doubt if they are up to 10 servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people if you have 1,000 more of those things it will still not be enough and yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been we have been wired to consume that's all we do. Those who produce are the ones who are working. Many of us are, are going into food. Question, if we don't buy the food, why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things? I, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that give me heart attack. You see that? That's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. <laughs> I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No. If I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Porta Court, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine. Wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save. Let me tell you something. Write it down. Never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much, as much as possible this is a difficult thing I know I'm human, trust me it's a very difficult thing but I want you to make a vow today with your life that as much as God grants you the grace, you will never borrow money the borrower is slave to the lender, say it after me Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs. 
because it comes easy when you borrow five naira you will borrow hundred thousand you will borrow five million until you find out that you are in debt of 500 million and you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing a borrower some of you as you are sitting down right now not just from anything maybe business failure or whatever your own personal debts that you have eaten everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off key you borrowed money for it you are smiling but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it you will be a slave forever it is one of the babylonian system that's why you notice i never talked about borrowing i'm sorry i know that this insults a lot of your business book, but i don't believe it in business we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt you use good debt as a leverage you use bad debt for consumption no debt is the kingdom's way no debt say it shout it again after hearing all that I've told you today you can choose to be emotional about what I've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit or you can make up your mind and say this is it I've come to the end of myself Lord I'm ready to begin to take decisions listen the key to producing anything in life is to adjust the most predictable thing in life is change change is the most predictable thing whether you participate in it or not it must happen there are two kinds of people there are victims of change and there are initiators of change whether or not you want things to change it must change listen a time will come all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change you will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator in nigeria many people are the recipients of change the wealthy people are the initiators of it i choose to be in that category i refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a a, a victim whatever happens i write it in. no sir we are going to pray rise up on your feet psalm 66 please psalm 66 verse 12 Psalm 66, verse 12. Media, can you help us, please? Psalm 66. Please, everybody, rise. This is a very serious moment right now. It's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One to read. It says we went through fire we went through water we went through times of hardship and turbulence but by your wisdom you have brought us into a wealthy place I announced to you Koinonia there is a place called the wealthy place there is a place it's a place of plenty it's a land of abundance and it is absolutely left to you I read you a scripture that the profit of the earth is for all. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart Take over, take over I have come to the end of myself Take over, I have touched the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. I still remember it as clear as yesterday. The night, 2004, lying down in my room. 
at area bz i remember getting up and making a vow i said lord this is it if this is what it takes to be blessed then i insist that i must be blessed i read my Munro's books discovering your potential just that one book please hear me and i made a vow i told myself i know that it will not happen overnight but no matter how slow i am willing to pay the price i told myself even if i have to leap into the wealthy place i'm going there i made up my mind i said i'm tired i made up my mind that my children will never get up to see a cruel and wicked father because of prosperity i made up my mind that i will never teach error in ministry because i'm looking for money i made up my mind that i will never soil my hands into witchcraft or anything the, the kind of money that will take me to hell no and for me to live in integrity i knew that i would pay the price i cried to the god of israel i remember it as clear as i'm looking at you tears were running down my eyes and i said oh god i pray that you will help me i pray that you will do something remarkable in my life i continued like that but nothing really happened watch this we're about to round up i want to challenge you 2007 was when i signed out of poverty forever experientially never to return there haven't done everything i did i remember it was a christ embassy church in port Harcourt. that night it was reverend owase evangelist owase and they had challenged people to sow and to do a lot of things and i went that night i will never forget i had just a bag my one bag that they gave me and recharge card a rechargeable lantern sorry i carried everything and i zipped the bag and i laid my hands i prayed with tears coming out of my eyes for three hours non-stop in tongues i said lord enough is enough i'm tired of this situation listen for as long as you keep massaging poverty in your life i promise you it will never leave you it takes aggression the fatness of your neck to break that chain and that yoke that's what i did i carried that bag and i was on my way i went to the church there was an overflow so i sat down outside and while i sat down outside when it was time to sow people were sewing television signing checks of millions i didn't have all of that but i was determined to break out of poverty watch this i wanted to move and the holy spirit told me to stay back look at this embarrassment after everybody had given then the holy spirit told me you can now go in a very seemingly disgraceful and embarrassing way i carried my back that was my isaac truly from the depth of my heart home and abroad as i dragged it to the altar it wasn't to give the usher and say please i'm embarrassed help me drop it there there were beautiful ladies in that church but i said none of you gave me money i'm determined to break out of this poverty when you are determined all these side distractions that carelessness here and there brings you set your face like a flint and i went there when i went i dropped it on the altar some people were laughing at me of course because the bag was not looking like something i'm sure they would just send it to one over here but that was my eyes listen and i returned back to my seat outside i stood there and it was as if somebody was piercing my heart with a knife a thousand times and while i stayed there the holy ghost spoke to me and he said son from this day you have entered wealth that's what the holy spirit told me he said from this day you have entered well i will never forget the next day 6 to 8 6 10 on the dot in the morning somebody calls me shaking and says are you joshua selman i say yes i say who are you he said i don't know you but the holy spirit instructed me to sow a seed into your life please i need your account number i said what in the world is this a few days later 
the chairman board of trustee of this ministry he's a general now he called me and i think he transferred how much was it four hundred thousand or something into my account no 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 he first gave me one hundred and fifty thousand he said the lord led me to tell me that you should buy a laptop and also buy a camera they were doing a pro within a span of about one week having prepared myself the door started opening mysteriously in less than four to five months i made my first million i will never forget how it felt that day not borrow not father's money not uncle and auntie not our money i just stood there and i said there is a wealthy place time will never change anything decisions do when moses died please look up everyone when Moses died, the Bible tells us how that he told Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. And now Joshua had a responsibility to throw down Jericho. And he was afraid because the Bible tells us that Jericho was a mighty city. Do you know the fence of Jericho? According to scripture, five chariots could stand on the fence. How will you break through that fence? That is a challenge. But he said, I will show you something. Watch this. 5 verse 1 of Joshua. Open our eyes, O God. And let men and women walk away from their chains forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look up at verse 1. Watch this. And it came to pass, it will be a fast reading. When all the kings of the Amorites who were on the side of Jordan, westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel, until we were passed over, that their hearts melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Now watch this. They were about to challenge Jericho. And when the other kings heard of the mighty things that God did, the kings tried to decipher what is it about Israel that makes them always win battles? What is it that makes them, whether you have a greater armory than them, is insignificant. They will throw you down. There was a mystery of dominion they were working with. And God was about to introduce Joshua. Joshua was just a young ruler taking over from Moses. And this is what he told him. Let's see the mystery. Let's take chapter 5 verse 2. 5 verse 2. Are you there? Now let's look at it. It says, At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Do what? He said, Make sharp knives. He's about to teach him how to continue in the steps of Moses. Make sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Let's continue. Three. And Joshua made sharp knives and circumcised all the children at the heel of the four skins. And then, and this is the reason why he circumcised them. All the people that came out of Egypt were males, even all the men of war. They died in the wilderness after they came out of Egypt. Five. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, when they came forth out of Egypt, were not circumcised. Are you seeing that now? All those who had been winning and making Israel make progress, it was because they were circumcised. But he said, these guys are not circumcised. And if you don't circumcise them, something dangerous is about to happen to you. Verse 6. It says, for the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness and all of that and all of that let's go to verse 7 and their children whom he raised up in their stead them joshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way verse 8 watch this and it came to pass when they were done circumcising all the people they abode in their places watch this joshua is afraid of conquering jericho and the walls that are before him and God said no problem heaven wants to come into your affairs but you need to authorize them 
it says circumcise the people the moment the circumcision finished verse 9 let's see what happened and the lord said to joshua this day i have what rolled away the reproach of egypt my goodness so all the while they were carrying the reproach because they were not circumcised he said the moment a circumcision a separation a cutting away happened he said this day i have rolled away the reproach of egypt from you wherefore the name of the place to this day is called gilgal go to verse 13 let's see something mysterious that happened verse 13 everyone look up and it came to pass listen joshua was by jericho that he lifted up his eyes immediately after circumcision he saw a strange man who came and said i'm ready to partner with you you have invited the realm of the spirit into your affair that man had been there all the while but there was no access he said you need help you can't conquer jericho by your strength the realm of the spirit wants to partner with you but the secret is the circumcision the moment it happened the bible says he lifted up his eyes and he saw a man with a sword and he went to him and said are you for us or against us next verse and he said nay but i come i'm also a warrior but i fight in the spirit the same way you guys are warriors i am also a captain i lead a battalion i help men on earth who invite us to come you are seated on the throne and he said and joshua fell on his face and did worship and he said unto him what saith my lord to his servant next verse watch this and the captain of the lord's host said unto joshua lose thy shoe from off your foot from the place you stand this holy ground and joshua did so next verse now jericho was straightly short watch this let me just save our time are you noticing what is happening here immediately after the circumcision he saw the captain then the captain started revealing to him the strategy this is how you will take jericho otherwise they would have died there because physically speaking jericho was insurmountable now watch this your tight in the spirit is similar to this spiritual circumcision your tight is an authorization for the realm of the spirit to come into your affairs and partner with you this is the reason why even human beings for men men because men are the carriers of the seed men are instructed to be circumcised why not sir? how can a man come from heaven we believe children are the heritage of the lord but you will give birth to a man and he will still go through circumcision are you getting the point now because the moment circumcision happens the realm of the spirit comes come come watch this you are on your own minding your business trying to win the war of life by yourself and god is saying you are doing this thing sensually you are doing this thing carnally you never will be able to do it he says honor me with your tithe and the moment that happens there is already a spiritual arsenal that comes to work with you and that which you have becomes supernatural not just natural not just natural it becomes supernatural the reason why there is a crowd of people inside and outside look at this right to the road right everywhere let me tell you the reason why it is not just because this is a great ministry it is because we have beckoned on the assistance of the supernatural there are some people standing outside who are even shocked that they are here when you see them you imagine there is no amount of invitation you would have given them to come but for the realm of the spirit he said i am come as a captain in other words the same way you fight there are spiritual arsenals to wait in you have been trying to fight every battle in your life just by using physical arsenals and the lord is saying the earth is fighting you 
when you return my designated portion you authorize the realm of the spirit to begin to help you this ministry by the grace of God we are faithful never for any reason and by any means under the sun will we touch God's portion not out of fear but out of revelation my life as a person God is my witness that I honor him and that portion that belongs to him this is why I'm dangerously protected it's not about a man no 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 dangerously protected I share with you a simple but powerful mystery when pastor Jakes was sharing and he said they picked somebody from his position and makes him a deputy manager deputy manager with interviews on phone you went to school and you are intelligent is that how it is done let me tell you the blessing breaks the rules for you it breaks the rules for you yes when men say it cannot be done it breaks the rules the problem is that we are too carnal we have intellectualized life life is spiritual say it after me one more time shout it like you believe it life is spiritual all that you see is not all that there is those who are controlling this world are those who have an advantage of the spirit You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. Tonight God is asking you, are you ready to stop struggling in life? Let me tell you, struggling is a cause. If you ever convince yourself that God is the author of your struggle. I am telling you now, struggling is a cause. It's a cause from the pit of hell. You will never be able to serve God if all you are doing in your life is looking for money. Because money is not missing. You were never supposed to look for it. Hallelujah. You will never be able to serve God if you allow this mammon the spirit that takes the heart of men away from God to begin to pursue other things. Trying to look for earthly relevance. There are people who want to build a house, but they want to build it physically. By putting blocks, you will die trying to build that house. Because there is a spiritual dimension to everything. Give us James chapter 2, verse 26. I hope we'll be able to find it. I'm reserving it for next week by the way next week friday here is going to be a powerful vigil hallelujah yes next week is going to be a vigil it's going to be a time of prayer and worship we're inviting guests from all over now watch this the lord showed me this mystery and it changed my life i shared it in abuja i was reserving it to start the teaching next week but your hunger has tempted me to go to that scripture and let's let's touch it a bit Paul, watch this. Oh, sorry, James, the apostle James was teaching on faith and works, corresponding action. Is that true? And while he was teaching on faith and works, he just feared off and brought a powerful principle. In an attempt to explain faith and work, he, comp he, he compares it with something. He says, for as the body without what a spirit now all of you watch this guy the only reason that i can interact with him is because there is a spirit is that true if the spirit leaves this body what happens i will reject the body all of you will reject the body are you getting me and we will have to bury him because it is a body though complete it has no spirit are you getting me now i want you Media, please keep it there. Keep it there so that we'll... I want you to remove the word us and just read just the first line to the comma. Are you ready? One to read. One more time. One more time. For the body without the spirit is dead. It didn't say for the body of man. 
for any material thing that does not have a spiritual force backing it it is dead for any material business without a spirit equivalent is dead for any church without a spirit agency backing it is like a dead body it says for a body without a spirit so the nation of israel was like a body without a spirit and he said joshua you will lose you need the spirit component and circumcision authorized the spirit when the realm of the spirit came they said let's go we can take jericho and with one shout this was what david knew that as big as goliath was he was a body without a spirit the other people were looking from the three-dimensional realm ah goliath was shouting and david looked at him he said i see a body but there is no covenant no spirit what is the force in the spirit backing you and goliath said am i a dog even if you fight me honor me and david said you are joking you don't know who is talking i'm not alone are you are an uncircumcised see the word again see the word again you are an uncircumcised I would have been afraid of you i would have considered your threat if you were circumcised where is the ties that connects you to the realm of the spirit and he said i'm circumcised i may be weak but there is a government that backs me when you get this key my brother you will run as if satan does not exist I promise you I promise you this you can jump around for deliverance you can hop from everywhere but the body without a spirit is dead so your boss in the office knows this and there is a spirit that backs his chair you just get up with your your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot because all in that office is not just a chair it's a throne there are spirits back in it that's why the bible said they that knew their god they that have connected with a spiritual advantage they shall be strong shall do experience rise from the realm of being natural and tap into the supernatural realm where the realm of the spirit assists you and your life will be nothing short of a wonder how many people listen i have given up on trying to do things by my strength because i know i'm wasting my time the body in the same way the next time somebody stands and threatens you that is a body without a spirit see no matter what talk people talk i only consider you if you are connected spiritually are you getting what I'm saying? I will deal with you. The body without the spirit is dead. I will make sure you leave this job. The body without the spirit is dead. You only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three-dimensional realm because there is an assistance, whether demonic or whatever. Are you getting me? circumcision is that key there are many who will continue ah we have a an extent we are going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week friday i'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man you will get up and jump and shout tonight all we are doing in this miracle service is by an ancient mystery crying and asking heaven and say lord behold the sick people and already in this place there are more angels the arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know that's always what happens whenever you see me come to sit down i smile around the stage i would have died of hypertension if i'm responsible for your healing but we have made arrangement already we are covered oh yes absolutely we are covered heaven is jealous jealous to protect his own because god's designated portion listen 
when you steal your tithe, you have not only destroyed your destiny, you have stolen from your children. Every time you don't tithe, just know that your firstborn is in trouble. If you don't do it again, you are affecting your children. Because he said, I will pour you a blessing, you will not have room. In other words, no matter how greedy you are, your lifetime cannot exhaust it. So when you steal, you have endangered the destiny of your children. God's portion. If anyone ever told you tithing is all about money, that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong. Tithing has nothing to do with money. It's the law of open heavens. Let me surprise you. If your tithe is 10,000 and you carry 1 million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that 10,000, you are operating under a closed heaven. Don't convince yourself that because you gave 1 million, the heavens is open. It is called due process. I'll teach you next week. There is a protocol to spiritual things. Are you getting my point? Tithing is what opens your heavens. And then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper. If you like, carry one billion. Give charity organization. Give for the building of church. If you are not a tither, I guarantee you, the Bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron. All of them are conductors of heat. Get set for heat in your life. When the heaven is open, if, not, if for nothing we know there is ventilation, fresh air, the wind comes. But when your heaven is brass and your earth is iron, many of us here, no matter what prayer happens in this, that's why we took the communion. The devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised. The devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. Even Jesus Christ acknowledged them. That's why he said he is the head of principalities. It destroys men's lives on legal basis. This earth is too wicked for you to allow chance. No. I pray for people all the time. People with cancers, HIV, tuberculosis, communicable diseases. Imagine if I refuse to be faithful. I would die like a chicken because most times I lay hands on people. And there are medical doctors here. They know that some of these things are physically not healthy. But I'm circumcised. My goodness. You invoke my name in a shrine. Both the invoker, the invokee, and the ordinance. It, they will burn to ashes. Ashes. No matter how mad a man is. He doesn't enter fire by mistake. He can cross the road and you say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, he fears off. When heaven backs you, let me tell you, your life becomes a wonder even to you. This ministry is a wonder to everyone. Not just because we are so smart. We are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit. Because by the arm of flesh shall no man pray. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne, you are 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 mighty in this place, you are mighty in this place. You 
are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in my life. 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 Hallelujah. We are going to pray just two prayer points and then I'll begin to minister. You are mighty in this place. Ay, 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 ay. They that are with us are greater. Greater, greater, man toskala bandigalia. There shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Rababa cinema na 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 na. Prayer point number one. Oh God, by the blood I cry for mercy. Where I've allowed the devourer, I have stolen from my tithe your designated portion. I've allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers. Now I realize and I ask for your mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside. Lift your voice. Your tithe is your spiritual circumcision. If you take what I've shared tonight, for many of you, this is your secret. It's your password to a mysterious level of lifting. A level of lifting that will surprise you as much as surprise those who are your spectators. God's portion. The time. His designated portion. 
that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute we are going to pray in the next five minutes listen I want you to confront the gates of your destiny and I want you to pray and say you must open up this night lift your voice is the seventh month the gates of my destiny must open up by the power of the Holy Ghost 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 I see the angels of the Lord already moving. Oh. Let me just add one more prayer. Listen. Oh, I want you to pray. Listen. There are giants on every mountain. Every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go. But tonight, I want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say I must go tonight lift your voice inside and outside cry I must walk away That HIV must go today. That barrenness must go today. That stagnation must go today. Koinonia, pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family if they are here? The family that came with the poison person. 
Are they here? Please let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are here to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow, we just move and we don't stop. So you have one minute while you are praying in tongues. Just write your prayer request very quickly. So that when it's time to pass it, you just pass it very fast. Manta la dosa so predisci la coria da balarabas. Make sure you don't keep silent. Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me, what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. tonight and we declare that this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit. Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week, again and again, I kept seeing, please pay attention. Can I have strings, 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 strings? Hallelujah. I kept seeing again and again, spirits, watch this, spirits leeching onto people. This is what I kept seeing. Like a man sitting on a man's shoulder. I saw this over many people. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord began to, re to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families. And the Lord said, when I come up, he said, the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers. Dislodge those powers. I saw them like a man, like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another, bringing a resistance to your destiny. And I'm about to pray for you right now. There are so many people under the sound of my voice. So many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands everyone. Inside and outside. There will be such mighty deliverances outside. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone um, uh, suffering from severe migraine. But then that migraine you think is just sickness. 
we are about to make a shout brothers and sisters this shout is like the sling of david it looks ordinary but there is a circumcision upon it it's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm it's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men it's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic it's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now there will be mighty deliverances mighty deliverances hallelujah I'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we are going to shout that name Jesus my goodness I sense the anointing of the spirit heavy the power of God will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit some of you are already feeling uncomfortable it's the power of God especially many outside there will be mighty deliverances lift your hands now thank you Jesus father in the name of your son I pray right now and I sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the fire of the spirit Oh, restrain not your hand, oh mighty one. We pray that you arise as a man of war. There are destinies at the mercy of your touch. I pray that by this shout, oh God, there be a visitation. That by this shout, oh God, everyone here, under any spirit, help them please. Help them. Bring them out. Everyone here, under any influence, as we shout, let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name i command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft in the name of jesus Lift your hands. Malatata. I'm seeing altars on fire. That's what I see in the spirit. Please bring them out. Altars on fire. One more time, we're going to shout. Physically, many of you will feel the fire. Physically, physically. Right now, in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! Oh, yes. That's fire. That's fire. That's fire. Of the Holy Ghost. Brings deliverance. Outside. 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 Miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. Mighty deliverance. By the power of the Holy Ghost. You must let them go. You must let them go. Right now. By fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There are people here. As I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost will locate them. I'm seeing ladies, ladies, a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire. Oh God, locate them right now, right now, right now. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Ladies, ladies, a miracle is happening to sisters. I cast those spirits. I cast those spirits. Outside, the fire is falling on ladies. It's falling on 
la ropa Entre que te quitemos Guapí que te Sería acá para Paco to piquetero, siempre que te quita, lo salada mamá, siempre que te quita, 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 Right now as I speak, oh. the power of God comes upon that person. Oh. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, the power of God comes upon that person. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. Please lift your hands. Lift your hands. I hear my spirit families. Families. God is stepping into families. There are altars. There are altars over families that are about to be broken. As you are standing right now, God is going to be visiting your family. At that shout again, inside and outside, make sure you are participating. Inside and outside, we are going to shout that name. As you shout the name of Jesus, families, I see altars on fire. Are you ready now? Father, any family under the yoke of bondage, as they shout this name, let there be a visitation. One, two, three. Jesus! Families, be free now. Be free now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm hearing marital spells. Marital spells. Please lift your hands. Listen. Hear me. 
something mighty is about to happen here the lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as i begin to speak the wind i see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh god visit them right now in the name of jesus one more time we will shout that name wherever they are one two three jesus coming Dorcas an altar is on fire and I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle Dorcas Dorcas come and stand here hallelujah who is Israel I'm hearing a name Israel Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not based in Zaria, sir. No, I'm not saying, She's where is she? Mina, Niger State. She's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Father, change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, it's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he is bringing rest to your yes, family. Sir. This Amen, night. Sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. 
Why the same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you, yourself, otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship. But hold my hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring rest to this lady. Bring rest to her in the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman that had a miscarriage? There is a woman that had a miscarriage. And the Lord is asking me to minister to her. We may not be able to minister to everybody, but there is, there is someone. Please make sure you don't sit back. The Lord is ministering to me about that person. So that we'll just, we'll just pray for her. Dogara. Dogara. I'm hearing a name, Dogara. Dogara. Who is Dogara? You? Your name is Dogara? Yes, sir. Where's your dad? He's at home. In Kaduna. He's, he's at home. In Kaduna. We have to pray for him. What I'm seeing will never. If they are permitting anything, please and please maybe carry them out. Of We're about to pray, please. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident. In the name of Jesus, it will not come to pass. We cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madam, I want to pray for you. The way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back? Now come. There's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family. Because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. It's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage. Yes, sir. Because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. And that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay. You understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the Spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand and pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? We have to pray because I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You're all Israels. And I'll pray with you. Come. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman, but in the realm of the spirit, all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just what I mean. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now. In the name that is above all names, there is no hiding place. The light of God is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is no hiding place for you by the blood of Jesus Christ. You must release this woman. It's a spirit of death. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is liberty for this boy. There's liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There's liberty. Hallelujah. Now, all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of their lives. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord, leave their lives. Leave their destinies. Restoration of virtue. Of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me, rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me. You, come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah, come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says I should tell you he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a bola. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's rolling away the reproach from your life. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and let's release miracle job. If you don't believe in it, put down your hand. I command you by the blood of Jesus, you foul spirit, you have oppressed this body. In the name of Jesus, I break your covenant, I break your ordinance. There is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady. It's not just her. Can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady? I curse you. Now, I curse you. I curse you by the God of heaven. And I curse you by my office. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we're playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical. Yet in the realm of the spirit, you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father, jobs now. In the name that is above all names. I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare everyone called jobless here by the favor of God 
I terminate joblessness right now. Amen. By the favor of God, I terminate joblessness right now. Amen. Anyone who has applied for any job, I compel them to call you. I compel them to call your loved ones. I compel them to favor you. Hallelujah. Do we have anyone here called Agnes? Agnes. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. The Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes. We we'll begin to pray for the sick shortly. Agnes. I'm hearing the name Agnes. God is ministering to me. He wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes. Do we have anyone there? Agnes. Your name is Agnes. Your name too. Your family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg, mysteriously, paining you, and it looks it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. a body without the spirit look what is happening to this girl and then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife are you seeing that is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person imagine what it would do to someone's destiny i say this without a sense of cynicism many of the people that god is setting free attend churches every week look we need to restore the power of god in our churches and stop playing games with god because god's idea is not just for one platform hallelujah swollen legs no 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 don't, you don't you don't have to madam i see you too your legs for how long What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent baby. Lord, have mercy on this baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and we let them come out. I'm just going to speak to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you, who had a dream? In a dream, it's like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream. And something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something. Or, an, uh, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. 
something beat me when I was sleeping. I just woke up and screamed. So blood was coming out of my legs. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to flow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You From prayed when you woke up. The, the Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God, and God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I curse it. Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is swollen. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in me. It's for me to stand or to walk. Almost two years. It's broken for me. Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? You can't stand straight. It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's, it's you catch believe? Food, it's catch huh? food, Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out came through out. the other This thigh. is the person I'm talking about. Yes, and it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to his present. This guy Where is, is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos? Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that sir. he's been prayed for. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate? Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hands. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cast this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I pray Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I do. You believe with all your heart? Yes Madam, what's your situation? I have nail pains Since I, yes, since I feel sick, they used to swell up Since, since, I, can't, you, since I was sick for six months they used to swell up, but now I can't walk, I can walk and be feeling sharp pain Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? My leg is swollen over five years Five years? Where is, which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand? I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? Two months now. I started to leave this leg. Two months? Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis? Yes. Who else? Who again? I have leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs are swollen. Oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is the leg, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus, this is witchcraft. For five years, I'm seeing a spirit. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus, you can't remain in her. The swollen legs, I command the swelling to go down in the name of Jesus Christ. 
In the name of Jesus, Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. trusting God for healings and miracles I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place it is not a thing of pride to have so many look at literally maybe hundreds of people right outside there is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people it's not God's idea to have one superstar it's just that many people especially men of God are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I'll be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and save The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. What is wrong with you? Just a laying on of hands. The anointing of the spirit is like a drug. The moment it enters your body, it begins to work and it brings you healing. You will notice that some people are standing for healing, but as soon as hands are laid on them, devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities. Holy, 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 holy,
holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. of this brother the legs look at me leave him move your hand look at me have you tried walking before huh? lift your leg try lift it lift it lift the other one Stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come, 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 just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come, 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 come on, you celebrate Jesus. Mighty on your throne. You are yet to pass yours, please. Just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, my heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Go 
those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, on as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead, Shibarato Soto Go ahead, stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater, our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka Parata Katabaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of miracles. send answers my father I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened be opened my father I pray for healings Lord healings or terminal cases Lord let it be turned Lord where people said there's no way my father we pray that doors Lord you create streams in wilderness places my father Lord for people that cast away my father Lord you make them renowned by the power of your spirit we ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord. Prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, 
people that are insane you cause them to be sane in the name of Jesus we pray for contract that long delayed Lord we pray that Lord will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus and we pray for a shield of protection over your saints Lord in the name of Jesus we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit let the fire of God call, come on cold altars in the name of Jesus let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of Jesus we give you praise we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us Lord we give you praise blessed father for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit we thank you in the name of Jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that your request has been turned into a test scriptures talk I like you to shout about a blessing that happens to your is in the law of God. So as someone says, it is by his delight is in the law of God. And God, he never did day and night. For many of you to be like you are dreaming is like a tree when you will watch one by one by, by the by rivers one of water. By one by one by one by one. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he does Christ. it in every season. As you are about listening to this it's message, by the we believe that your life is not going English, to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Of the your leaves are forever Hallelujah. going to bear. And we this know that your, your season will not again. pass by. This you will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We if have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel. As well as right like now. us, Before hit we that notification bell to receive to more updates from us. Because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature the that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Is the creative dimension. That's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word. Never joke with the power of prophecy. That's the power that created the heavens and the earth. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Before we do that very quickly, everyone inside and outside, there are people here tonight who are saying, man of God, I want to commit my life to the Lord. I've seen the miracles. I've seen the signs and wonders, but my way is not right with the Lord. You know that right now, as you're standing here, if the trumpet sounds, you're not making heaven. You know it right now. Having a Christian name is not the same as having a relationship with Jesus. There are some you've given your heart to the Lord at one time. Please help those under the anointing. I tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now. I sense a heavy anointing on me already. That's why I'm doing this very quickly. Now if you are here, please don't delay us. You are saying I want to return home. For whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of God and you are saying Lord I have heard your word and I'm not ashamed to make Jesus my Lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now I'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. hallelujah hallelujah keep coming god bless you you have won it all for me hallelujah Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. So so deep with you. We give you the praise. Sasa give 
of you for coming out this is the way to the cross listen no matter what you achieve in life if your eternal destiny is not secured it says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life but he said this life is in his son until you have the son you do not have that life lift your right hand forget about who is looking at you and in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. It's not a special number. This is a decision. There's one of you here. You smoke all these kinds of things. It go and the rest. Huh? But as you pray this prayer, the power is broken over your life. Say after me, as loud as you can from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life in Jesus name I pray now I stretch my hands over you and I declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of Jesus I declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life I release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of Jesus it is wiped away I set you free I break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. I want to congratulate all of you for making this decision. This is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, so that you catch up with us in this prophetic session, I want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands. They will have your details and then will follow you up very closely. Praise the Lord. Just follow them, Koinonia, celebrate them as they go. All of you this way, this way, just follow the gentleman. Now, everybody rise, please. I want you to receive this prophetic word. This is the seventh month, and the Bible says, Revive thy work in the midst of the years. Hallelujah. There is a mystery with the seventh month. Is the time where God perfects all things as I prophesy to you please I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't, don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer Satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time I know you are trying as ushers, just stand around. Satan does not have authority. I want you to know that there is an anointing. Manifestations are already signs that his power is broken. But Satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh. So he begins to act around your mind to distract you. When you ignore Satan, is one way of conquering him. It does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense. Are you getting my point? So this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. I prophesied as I was commanded. 
You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. Seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister today that be the heirs of salvation I pray for you every weakness in your life that weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year. An anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every student here. Oh, for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding. I'm praying for you. Some of you, listen, as I pray now, some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head. Is an impartation of knowledge right now oh God I release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it take it take it take it now take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka ta 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 inside and outside Take it for exploits, exploits, exploits. Hallelujah. Everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy. I command stagnation to end now. 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 My goodness, something is happening to your destiny. Every night season in your life, every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day i speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now I see at least 100 people 100 people like fire 100 people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 I prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor favor favor
Everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level. I don't care where they are, but I sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we're entering called August. May that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level. Receive the keys of the next level. The mysteries of the next level. Every spiritual blindness. Shababa. Things happen around you you cannot see. Lord of spiritual vision I pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as I'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the Holy Ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now. Be free from it right now. Be free from it right now. Hallelujah. There are many of us here. Dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction. But for many of us, our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there. The Bible says they will dream dreams. It says they will see visions. Shakataba, lift your hands. There will be an, a restoration anointing right now. I just want you to shout, I receive. Listen, many things will happen to you. Many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where God will start showing you the blueprint for the next level. Right now in the name of Jesus, at the count of three as you shout, I receive. Let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams Hallelujah. It says, What do you have in your house? And she said, Nothing except a jar of oil. I want to prophesy upon your gift. It's one thing to be gifted, but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed. There are many of you, the gift you have can bring bread to your table, but nobody is seeing it. Is one thing to be gifted, is one thing to be skilled, but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed. Thou anointed my head with oil, and it makes my cup to overflow. I prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift, whatever has made your gift barren right now. In the name of Jesus, I anoint your gift now, I anoint your skill now. I anoint your gift now. I to 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 to. But God to secrete area kata creativity, creativity. I release it. I release that anointing, creativity, skill, expertise, competence, proficiency. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others 
but you are not cursed it's God's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light I pray for you whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you hallelujah everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year you have tried by your strength i'm releasing grace upon your life right now go back to that same thing and watch how god will bless you through it i pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of jesus christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here i strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine, arise and shine. lift your hands one last prayer listen I want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as I speak father I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and bread in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gift one two three take it take it gift of healing Word of knowledge, gift of prophecy, 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 prophecy. I activate the prophetic. I open your eyes. Spiritual gifts, endowments of the spirit. I declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of Jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow I prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring into your life hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise father we give you all the praise I assure you you will know that this miracle service was unusual you will know many of you right from this night tomorrow will not reach you start having your testimonies right from this night right from this night favor alerts calls I mean connections mysterious happenings I speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny and in the name of Jesus I command that every gate that has been closed the Bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for you in the name that is above all names let 
everything in your life start working for you I command the earth to work for you I command the wind to work for you I command the stars to work for you everything that is a disappointment in your life I change it tonight to a testimony Hallelujah. if you're worshiping with us for the first time keep standing everybody there are many people outside let me speak upon your life personally wherever you are please make your way to the front quickly we have one minute to do this God bless you this is your first time you are most welcome there is a prophecy for you you must carry a signature no stand up keep standing everybody must know you came for koinonia hallelujah listen when you come here we may not give you hampers but we give you an identity you will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the christ make your way to the front koinonia celebrate them glorious glorious god brought them by his spirit is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty god has done for us as a house Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.